Welcome to Lecture 1 on Sleep Test Interpretation. My name is Gilbert Burdine. My pulmonary training precedes sleep as a specialty. I am largely self-taught from treating patients with sleep-disordered breathing and interpreting sleep tests for 30 years. The tar target audience for these lectures is the pulmonary fellow. Anyone interested in sleep can gain some practical knowledge from this lecture series. Principles and Practice of Sleep Medicine by Krieger et al. is a good reference text. In this lecture, I will go through a normal study. One cannot appreciate sleep pathology without an understanding of normal sleep. We will be looking at a scored report. Scoring the raw data into sleep stages and the marking of events is a topic unto itself which will not be covered in this lecture. The graphic summary gives an, a qualitative overview of the study. The hypnogram is very useful. The stages of sleep are graphically illustrated. The report will contain a table of total time and percentage of sleep for each stage, but the distribution of these stages is very important. In particular, the distribution of stage REM is very important. While the scored report will contain a table listing the number and index of events, the graphical display of events is very important. Since this patient has very few events, this importance is not apparent. Other cases and other lectures will demonstrate that associations of events with stage REM or supine position may exist. Like events, the graphical pattern of oxygen saturation is very important. The table will tell us the overall saturation, but the graphic gives insight as to, cause, as to the cause of the oxygen desaturation. Many things happen with changes in body position. The graphic allows correlation of events, sleep stage, and oxygen saturation with body position. Supine position frequently gives the worst results. The hypnogram gives an overall picture of sleep. Many important parameters can be seen from this graphic. Sleep onset is self-explanatory. Sleep latency is equal to the time from the start of recording to sleep onset. REM onset is also self-explanatory. REM latency is the time from sleep onset to the onset of REM. A separate figure may be also given for REM latency, less wake, sleep, less wake time, which will exclude time the patient is awake following sleep onset, but before REM onset. This patient had four REM periods. We see that they were not fragmented. This late REM period is very important to good sleep quality. People who do not allow enough time for sleep may wake up before having this important REM stage. Normal sleep should have three to five REM periods. They should be roughly the same length and evenly distributed from REM onset to the end of sleep. Data tables within the scored report attach numbers to what we see in the graphic summary. The total recording time is self-explanatory. The sleep period time is the time from sleep onset to the end of the record. The total sleep time is the total time spent in any of the sleep stages. The normal value decreases with age. The sleep efficiency is the ratio of total sleep time to total recording time. A ballpark figure for normal is 85%, but the normal value decreases with age. The sleep latency is the time to sleep onset. It can be calculated as total recording time minus sleep period time. I use 15 to 24 minutes as the normal range, but these vary with age. Values less than 10 are consistent with sleep deprivation. Wake after sleep onset is the time spent awake following the onset of sleep. Lower is better. 
There is a normal increase with age, and the bladder plays a role in this. There should be three to five REM periods. We can determine spacing and duration from the hypnogram. I use 90 to 120 as the range of normal for REM latency. This decreases with age. Respiratory events are tabulated. Central events are apneas without effort to breathe. Apneas are detected by an absence of airflow. Airflow is usually monitored by a nasal thermistor. Obstructive events are apneas with effort. Effort is usually detected by expansion of the chest. Some systems look for paradoxical motion of the abdomen. The concept of, for mixed events is self-explanatory. The boundaries are somewhat arbitrary. Hypopneas are minimal breaths that are ineffective for gas exchange. The apnea hypopnea index takes the sum of the apneas and hypopneas and divides by the time and hours. Normal AHI is less than 5. Medicare and insurance companies will automatically approve CPAP therapy for AHI greater than 15. Respiratory effort related arousals are breaths that require so much effort that the brainstem triggers a respiratory alarm leading to arousal from sleep. Some people lack the criteria for sleep apnea but have many respiratory effort related arousals. These people are labeled as upper airway resistance syndrome. The respiratory disturbance index takes the sum of the apneas, hypopneas, and respiratory effort related arousals and divides by the time and hours. The REM AHI is the AHI during REM sleep. Some patients have few events in non-REM sleep, but many events in REM sleep. These REM events can disrupt REM sleep. This is a normal oximetry and not very exciting. The threshold we use is 90%. This gives us an idea of how much hypoxemia exists. We see the oxygen saturation abruptly improved with a change in body position. Body position will often be the precipitating factor for hypoxemia. Not much happened here. This is expected in normal subjects. This is an artifact. The probe may have come off the finger. The table gives numbers to what was seen in the graphic. The mean oxygen saturation gives us an idea of how bad the situation might be. Higher values are better. The minimum oxygen saturation may tell us all we need to know. If the minimum is 89% or higher, the patient will not qualify for supplemental oxygen. This tells us how long the patient had an oxygen saturation less than 89%. Medicare requires a value of 5 or higher to qualify for supplemental oxygen. This concludes Lecture 1. In the next lecture, we will look at an obvious case of obstructive sleep apnea.